Are you sitting comfortably? Well, it turns out that very few of us are. And when you think about it, the way that we sit behind a steering column is a rather bizarre position in which to while away the hours. Look at the leg position, for instance. You don't do this on your sofa, with your knee up here, your leg down there, and your foot balancing on its heel. And of course, you don't sit like this either, with your arms out in front of you, wobbling about for a bit. And also, with no head protection, your head tends to meander around your shoulders for hours on end. Well, it all adds up up to major driver fatigue and that's a big safety issue. So I've come to the heart of Hertfordshire to meet a man who's convincing the car manufacturers that we should all be sitting pretty. And here he is. Terry Mole is an osteopathic consultant who's advised Saab, Ford and many others on car seat design and use and he's currently spearheading Vauxhall's Campaign for Comfort. So Terry, what's the big problem? I get in my seat, I adjust it to the most comfortable position for me, so that's all you can do, surely. What feels comfortable isn't necessarily right. If we look at you, first of all, you're wearing a thick coat, which means that it spoils the shape of the seat and moves you too far forward on the base of it. So that really should be the first starting point to get into correct driving position. Well, that's a surprise to begin with. I didn't realise a coat could be a problem. How about seeing if we can get that coat off and sit you properly? All right, well, we'll do that in a minute, but just tell me what's wrong with the position I'm in right. now. Right, well, if you look, put your leg, foot in the accelerator and press it down. Yeah. You've got a gap here, there's no support, even in the most depressed position. Ease it up to a normal driving position, you'll find that comes away even further. So a gap under the knee is wrong? No, you need support, that's right. You don't want a gap there, you want support. It means you're too close. And you've got height and tilt adjustment on this seat too. So we'll take you back a bit. Now depress the accelerator fully. That's better. And then let it go then. And just yes. drive in normal. You're now getting some yes. support. We can bring you up a fraction at the front as well with the seat. You're now properly supported. Right. What about my back? Well, your back is too upright. As I say, the coat is an exacerbating situation. We'll take you back now. Put your left hand on the steering wheel. Now, that's better. You were much too upright. Now, that's a much better position. Your weight is going through your shoulders onto the seat. The lumbar curve is supporting you, and you reduce the amount of weight on your hips. You're also much more stable because gravity is now holding you in the seat instead of letting you move around. And the one thing you didn't look at was the lumbar support here, which we should take right off, and then tell me as soon as you feel it. Just oh, I can feel it on the, on that's the it. Soon you back that's now. fine. You stop then. That's all the pressure you need. Lumbar supports are not the be all and end all that a lot of people say they are. Too much lumbar support actually rotates the pelvis forward, which is bad. Now, the other thing as well, the head restraint for you should be one notch higher because you'd be just level with the base of your head. Okay. Just whip. That's it. That's lovely. And then you've got the seat belt on. That should come down a fraction on adjustment so it goes across your shoulder and gives you proper support. That's it. So there is an awful lot to think about. What surprises me slightly is this backrest position because I thought if I was upright I was more alert and watching the road and that sort of thing. That's right because you'd probably sit more upright thinking that it's the best position to be. In fact if you're too upright you aren't supported at the shoulders. You don't get back onto the seat. The shape of the seat doesn't work and every time you corner you're having to hold yourself because the seat isn't holding you. Gravity has made you unstable in that position whereas gravity now is holding you against the seat. So are my problems typical of the motoring population, Terry? Well, in fact, you were better than a lot. Some people sit, <laughs> only okay. a little though, but <laughs> some people sit much too close and much too, there's people who sit so far back they're straining and away from the seat back and people really don't know how to use a car properly. Mm. OK, well, now there are lots more issues. <laughs> We've already covered quite a few, uh, not to do with the seat, but other things inside the car that can also add to comfort and safety. So should we go for a drive? Sounds like a very good idea. Well, Terry, my new seating position feels fine. I'm literally more laid back than I used to be. I suppose that's a good thing. But you were saying that other things are important too inside the car, not just the seating arrangement. What else? There are a number of things which affect driver comfort. Obviously, steering wheel relationship, pedal relationship, minor deviations from straight on those are tolerable, but if they're majorly offset, then they do have an overall discomfort creation problem. Right. There are other things air conditioning or better still climate control adds to the driver's proper environment. You can make yourself very dozy by being too hot but with good climate control or air conditioning keep yourself cool on all occasions. Well racing drivers for instance sit very low down and they think that's the best way to drive. What do you think about that? Racing drivers know 
where they're going. They know nothing's coming the other way and they don't need to see a child or something run out from behind a car very close to the front of the vehicle. They have almost no intrusions in front anyway. In a car for road use, it's much more critical that we're at the highest reasonable point we can be to get the best possible vision, not only ahead but immediately in front of the car, plus the fact that from the point of view of the legs and the hips working, it's much more effective when we sit up from the pedals rather than low down to them. How much of the responsibility lies with the driver and how much is it a cause for the car manufacturers and the seat manufacturers themselves? Well, it's, it's equal in both because it's always a personal responsibility to make use of things that we have. But I think where the big gap has been in the market is that nobody has taken the time or trouble to tell people how to use the seats they're making. Because a good seat that's badly used is actually worse for you than a very average seat which is well set. So now we know what makes a good driving environment and how you should be sitting comfortably in your car. And if you're wondering how your car seat compares with the rest of the world, then, uh, well, Terry, you've got an interesting way of showing. I do indeed. Terry Moll's top ten cars for drivers. Here we go with the top ten uh, standby pop pickers. At number ten, the Fiat Punto SX. Ease of entry and exit, good seats, high driving position, fully adjustable steering wheel, great little car, value for money. At number nine, the Vauxhall Astra Sport. Excellent seat with adjustable thigh support, good headroom, fully adjustable steering, rake and reach, good ergonomics, best of the model range. At number eight, the VW Golf. Excellent seats, fully adjustable steering wheel, rake and reach, good ergonomics, available throughout the range. And what's at Terry's number seven? It's the Ford Mondeo GLS. It's excellent seat, good adjustable steering, good headroom, good value. And at number six, the Saab 93. Excellent seat, whiplash head restraint, excellent headroom, great value for money again. We're now at number five, and it's the Volvo S70. Great car again, good seating, good posture support, very safe, good features. At number four, the Vauxhall Omega Elite. Good seats, air conditioning, cruise control, navigation system, great value for money. And at number three, it's the Saab 95. Superbly safe car, wonderful seats and ergonomics, whiplash resistant head restraint system, and one of the most comfortable cars on the market. At number two, it's the S Class Mercedes electric seat pack. This is a car with so much room, it's almost immoral, not as big to drive as it looks on the road. And at number one, it's the BMW 7 Series Sport. Superb seat with support for thigh adjustable, unique shoulder support adjustable. At this moment, very hard to beat. It's official, the 7 Series BMW Sport straight in there at number one. We've been driving the Vauxhall Omega, which does well too, but where on earth are we going to get a 7 Series Sport at this time of day? Well, that's a bit of luck. Will this one do? Perfect. Excellent. You can show me why this is so special. I can indeed. Let's have a look at the seat. Wow. Well, it certainly looks sumptuous, but then you'd expect that in a car of this quality, wouldn't you? What are the salient features here? Well, you have a seat that has a very good shape, side support, good bolstering there. It has a good relationship to the wheel, which is fully adjustable, but it has this electric thigh support, which is excellent, enables you to fit the support under the leg as required. That's Even rather you... neat, isn't it? I've not seen that before. <laughs> well, it is. There are other cars that have it, but if you have short or long legs outside the average, this makes a big difference. Uh -huh. But the thing that's very special about this, it has adjustable shoulder support. You can see the top move then. This means that uh -huh. you can always make sure you have adequate support in the shoulders, which is one of the failings of a lot of cars. Fabulous luxury. So the idea of a seat like this is to uh, complement and match your body contours as much as it possible. It is indeed. So long as you're using the proper principles to make sure that you're getting it set right, then it really does do the job for almost everybody. Well, we'd better go and try it out, really, hadn't we? We certainly should. <laughs>